You get more out of life when you go out to a movie. Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm -hmm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, Go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. In the mood for hot coffee? When you are, nothing else will satisfy. Coffee has a flavor, an aroma, a deep down satisfying goodness all its own. And our coffee has something extra, the care with which we brew and serve it. You'll enjoy the show more while you're enjoying steaming hot coffee. Come and get yours now. Yes, there's an air of the that's full-bodied, refreshing hot coffee makes any time a pleasant interlude. Won't you have some now? Junior, he's always hungry. As for Sis, she's hungry too. Our barbecue is prepared with just the right amount of heat to keep in the natural juices and hold in that wonderful flavor. Aren't they delicious? Boy, does Junior go for them. And Sis likes them, too. So come on, boys and gals. Let's have a barbecue. Start with truly good meat, properly cooked. Add barbecue fixins that are tangy and tasty, made from finest ingredients, blended the old-fashioned way. Put the barbecued meat on a tender bun, and you've got some eaten that's world-beaten. Try our famous barbecue at the refreshment stand now. Guess what? Guess what would taste good right now to everyone in the car? Candy. We've got your favorite kind at the concession stand. Come on down and pick out the kinds you want to enjoy during the rest of the show. Be sure to get plenty because everyone likes candy and our big variety is chosen to please everybody's taste. <laughs> Get the item that adds to your personal comfort. Cigarettes, here they are. Get the kind you prefer and enjoy them thoroughly. All the most popular brands. Get the item that adds to your personal comfort. Cigarettes, here you are. Get the kind you prefer and enjoy them thoroughly. All the most popular brands. There's plenty of time to treat yourself to something good to eat at our refreshment center. Attend the church of your choice this Sunday and take someone with you. This is a dill pickle, a mighty pretty pickle, especially when he joins you at the show. We have lots of pretty pickles waiting for you at the refreshment center. They're plump, tender, mouth-watering. Wouldn't one taste good right now? Pizza! 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 
Pizza, pizza, pizza. Everybody loves pizza, and we're now featuring the famous original Tolona pizza. Only the finest and purest ingredients go into the original Tolona pizza, made fresh to your order. And into the oven it goes. Presto, a luscious, hot, crispy pizza. We're now featuring... Hey, wait a minute. Give me another pizza. <laughs> That's better. Now, as I was saying... We now have delicious, crispy Tolona pizza at the refreshment stand. What do you have? Cheese, sausage, or pepperoni? Take it away! Hello. You know, when you fix an Italian food, everything has got to be just so perfect. Especially when you're making a pizza. I'm going to show you. Looks of gold? <laughs> you bet you my life. And it's a delicious. That's the pizza you get at the theater. So hurry up. Get yourself some. You like our pizza pies, made from a famous Italian recipe. They're waiting for you right now at the concession stand. Enjoy tempting food at its best. Try our delicious pizza. It's ready and piping hot at the refreshment center now. If you like pizza made the real Italian way with bubbly cheese, tangy seasonings, pure ingredients, you'll say our pizza is the mosta. Try some now at the refreshment center. Everybody's crazy. Pop goes the weasel. Everybody knows the weasel blows. But popcorn, she pops real good. I eat popcorn. Everybody eats popcorn. She tastes real nice. Get yourself some now at our refreshment stand. It took a degree of learning, but our barbecue is done to a turn. Head for the refreshment stand now. To add to your enjoyment of the movies, we offer cold, refreshing, full-flavored drinks. Choice popcorn, freshly popped, crisp and tasty, and richly coated, taste-filled candy bars that are sure to please you. Yes, there are many good things here for your pleasure. Enjoy them. A snow cone, please. Cut. What's with this snow cone bit? The word is water. But I want a snow cone. Now, let's try it again. Now, this time, stick to the script. Okay. Action. Water. Water, please. So I get water. But where you are, you can get snow cones. Bring me one, will you please? Any flavor. Ah, snow cones. Here's a refreshment. Icy, cold, and superbly delicious. So get one now. We've got them in your favorite flavor. Your attention, please. All new hotshot electric in-car heaters have been installed for your comfort and convenience. Just insert heater through car window and turn on the switch. When leaving, please turn switch off and replace on speaker post. Warning, high voltage. For your own safety, do not attempt to repair or remove wires. Do not attempt to open heater unit. If you need assistance, please notify the theater box office or concession manager. This drive-in theater is radioactive. Now you can hear tonight's show on your AM car radio. Turn your ignition key to the accessory position. This will not drain your car battery. Now turn on your radio and zero in on the following AM station. Eight. 
ten tons of animal fury leap from the screen. Hey, look! Giant ape defy jaws of great white shark. See giant ape vanquish monster reptile. See ocean liner demolished. See Metropolis fight to survive flaming holocaust. See helpless beauty in embrace of 36-foot monster. See eight. utilizes X-ray, ultra, violet, and alpha, beta, and omega rays. This man is a killer. Oh. Mad with dreams of fantastic power. We're conducting experiments requiring fissionable materials. That's atom bomb stuff. The government has that locked up tighter than Fort Knox. You'll work for us faithfully, or you'll be turned over to the authorities. I understand there's a reward of $5,000 on your head. No money is safe. No man is safe. Nothing stops the amazing transparent man. Into army-guarded secret government vaults he goes, stealing confidential nuclear material, holding in his unseen hands the key to world power. But the amazing transparent man wants first vengeance. If I choke you hard enough, you'll bring me back. Yeah. 
What is it, officer? The man escaped from state prison, ma'am. This is just a routine. Who are you and where have you been? Oh, my name's Matson, Laura Matson. Uh, this is my husband, John. We've been to a party at Pritchard's Point. I'm afraid he overdid it. Um, may I check your driver's license, please? Yes, of course. What about your husband's? Well, that's why I'm playing chauffeur. His, his license was suspended. Uh, drunk driving. <laughs> well, there's no need to bother him. He's had enough trouble for one night without waking up and staring into the badge of an officer. <laughs> Very sorry to have inconvenienced you. Well, that's quite all right. when we get where we're going. Him around here to scare off visitors? He serves his purpose. Yeah, I guess everybody does. Julian, put the car away, will you? Is Paul waiting? Been in there chewing up the carpet for two hours. Any trouble? No. Joey Faust, this is Julian. I've seen him before in a police bulletin. Major Krenner, may I present Joey Faust? Major, does that surprise you, Mr. Faust? It's for real? What army? Well, there have been several. Take your choice. Please, Mr. Faust. It's lovely. What is it? It's only a bit of shrapnel. It's a keepsake. That piece of shrapnel ended the Major's military career. That will be all, Laura. Um. You did well, my dear, and I'll run along and freshen up while Mr. Faust and I discuss business. You'll excuse me? Major. Go ahead, uh, take off the coat if you wish. I know you'd like an explanation. Why did you set up the break? Oh, I can use you. You have got a reputation in the underworld as somewhat of a genius when it comes to opening safes and vaults. They must have dug that shrapnel out of your head. What kind of an idiot are you, Krenner? I can't poke my nose through a bank door without getting it blown off. Every newspaper in the country's got my picture. You're bitter, Faust. Mean and bitter. You trust no one and you hate everyone. You're the kind of man I need and understand. Because I know all about your background. Yeah. What do you know about me you couldn't have gotten out of any newspaper? Well, I check closely on all the people I use. I know about the wife who turned you in and the child you've never been allowed to see. I may owe you something, but if you ever mention my daughter's name again, you'll have another hole in your head, I promise you! If you wish. 
English. Mr. Fast? Yes, your background explains your behavior. Now, we're conducting experiments requiring fissionable materials. And you'll procure them for us. Oh, you'll be well paid. That's atom bomb stuff. The government has that locked up tighter than Fort Knox. Precisely. <laughs> Include me a long way out, chum. You're hardly in a position to bargain, Mr. Faust. A man with a gun doesn't have to bargain. Well, true, but I'm certain Julia would disagree with you on that. You know what one of these bullets will do, son? It'll rip out your spine and roll it up like a ball of string. What's the score, Krenner? You'll work for us faithfully or you'll be turned over to the authorities. I understand there's a reward of $5,000 on your head. And just what are these authorities going to say about your part in the break? Police need know nothing of my part in the escape. You see, they'll also pay 5000 for a dead Faust. What do you want? That'll be all for now, Julian. Come along to the laboratory. You got a lab here? Oh, yes. We're completely equipped for our experiments. I made an extensive search before selecting this ranch as an operational base. As you can see, this is quite a serious business. Dr. Ulof, come here. Yes, Major Krenner. Dr. Peter Ulof, Mr. Faust. Mr. Faust has joined us. He'll be supplying you with the vital materials. Dr. Ulof is an eminent nuclear scientist. Would you prepare one of your subjects for the rate treatment, Doctor? We must impress Mr. Faust with the end result of your highly acclaimed scientific labors. Ulof. I've heard the name. Oh, undoubtedly you have. I was quite fortunate in uh, convincing him to continue his work here for me. Now, this vault is of lead, two inches thick. It contains our radioactive materials. Doctor, I told you to move this. The ray could penetrate this lead like butter, and the whole countryside would go up in a mushroom cloud. There is so much you want. Well, you have to change it. Are you ready for the demonstration? I am ready. Frenner. I agreed to do your dirty work for you, but I got to know what's going on. Dr. Ulof would be glad to explain. Doctor, this is the principle of X-ray that goes further. X-ray pierces only the outer shell of the body to show what lies beneath. This ray neutralizes all tissue and bone structure in the body. This machine utilizes X-ray, alpha, beta, and omega rays, and ultraviolet. Combining them for best effect and filtering out qualities which would hinder our operations. Yeah. It'll seem more simple to you after you've seen what goes on. Why are you so worried about this box? Well, even a lead shield doesn't cut off all rays. It simply strains them considerably. Certainly, it still gets through. Any accidental concentration of rays from this apparatus could set up a chain reaction in the materials in the vault. A nuclear fission could result. Doctor?
Go ahead, Mr. Faust. Prove to yourself it isn't done with merits. You see? I touch it. Does me no harm. We'll have any doubts, Mr. Faust? No doubts. You can return the animal to visibility, Dr. Hey, uh... What happens to the guinea pig? Bulof has perfected the raid. The point, there's no danger to the subject. No ill effects at all. figures on hunt. your curiosity, Mr. Faust? As you could no doubt deduce, such a mechanism as this has unlimited possibilities. Ah, yeah, like what? Well, that will come later. First things first, please. See? No harm done at all. Perfectly healthy. I imagine you've seen enough for one day, hmm? And you certainly must be tired after your trip. Yeah, I could use a little sleep. Not sure Julia's found some clothes that'll fit you. Uh, in here. It's no concern of yours. Come on, Mr. Faust. I shouldn't be gone long. Leave the gate open and I'll lock it when I get back. I don't think you need to be cautious about Faust. He's dangerous and locks mean nothing to him. So I want you where you can watch his door at all times. Keep him in his room, you understand? He won't go nowhere. All right.
you in there, Faust. You want up here? Take it easy, Doc. I just came up to see you. Thought maybe they had you locked up in there. Not I. Only what's left of my soul. I came to get some answers. You seem about the only one around here who isn't a member of Krenner's fan club. I have nothing to say. I'm a servant. Major Krenner does my thinking for me. What's he got on you, Doc? Why do you ask me these things? So I can get some answers. How'd you get mixed up in this? My daughter. He's holding her. And that cheese box? Well, open it up. Let her out. Please, Mr. Faust, I do not joke. Not about my daughter. All right, Doc. Start at the beginning. How'd you get over here? At the end of the Second World War, I fled my own country with my baby daughter. My wife had died of experiments. I had been forced to perform on her in a concentration camp. Her own wife? All my patients wore hoods. I couldn't see their faces. I didn't know my wife was one of them until it was too late. Well, that still doesn't explain how you got here. I came to this country as a refugee. No one knew I was a scientist except spies like Krenner. After my wife died, I wanted no more of science. But Krenner forced me to come here. You is your daughter? If I do not do as I'm told, she will be killed. If I carry out the orders, she has security. I have only a few more months to live, but Krenner has seen to it that she will be provided for. <laughs> you don't think he's gonna keep that promise, do you? What choice have I? Soon I'll be dead. But my daughter's life is at stake. You have indicated that you could open it. Not now, Doc. I got problems. Please, Mr. Faust, release my daughter and take her to some safe place. Knock it off, Doc. I got my own troubles. Then you can't open it. <laughs> I could open that thing blindfolded. little psychologist, aren't you, Doc? That's good reasoning. Downstairs, Faust. And please try not to be amusing. Good night, Dr. Ulov.
Well, what's next, Matahari? You gonna shoot me? Credit probably will when he gets back. He doesn't appreciate disloyalty. Julian's the loyal type. All it got him was a lump in the head. He's still out. I couldn't bring him around. <laughs> what's so humorous? Now for a dame that's supposed to be so greedy, you don't know a thing about playing a whole card. Oh? Ever think how much that ray would be worth to a guy who wanted to rob a bank? Well, that thing I could get into every vault in the country in broad daylight. Dream on, Buster. It sounds pretty. Of course, to take on jobs like that, a fellow would have to have a little help. Now, uh, splitting the take of a few of those would uh, pay you a lot more than Krenner will ever give you in a lifetime. You need background music for this commercial. Full orchestra and violins. Uh -huh. Don't believe me. Don't be a gambler. Should I gamble on having my throat slit by Krenner or being shot by you? Well, honey, that's a chance you'd have to take. Just like the risk I run every time I get under that ray. Well, if you don't take a chance, you never know. I'll keep it in mind. Huh? Thanks, Julian. He was trying to make a deal. You must have heard what he said. He was talking a double cross. Yeah, I heard him. Sounded like you were listening awful close, too. Keep quiet about this, Julian. Keep quiet and I'll help you. You know that Krenner's gonna blame you for letting him out of his room. We've got to help each other now. Julian. Help me. Let's get in the room. I told you not to take your eyes off a fast door. Oh, him, he's out cold. I went in and picked up the bottle. Figured you didn't want him nipping in the morning when he wakes up. Well, you did right. He's got to be sober. Good night. Good night. What'd you do that for? Save your own skin? This idea of yours does interest me. I figure you need me more than I need you. make any deal? No, not yet, but I know you. My memory is too good. I remember our other deals. You don't think I gave you enough of a share, do you? What are you talking about? What could I possibly have in common with Faust? He's a hood. Just the type you go for. Laura, I don't care what you do with your life, but when it interferes with my plans, I draw the line. <laughs> well, that's a dot on the eye. Lay off the vodka. I want you ready when I need you. If you will relax, Mr. Faust, there will be no pain. You may lose consciousness for a few moments after you become invisible, but there should be no avail effect. How do you know it'll work on a human? Do you know what'll happen? We made hundreds of such experiments. There can be no slip up. Doctor, we don't have all night.
be all right. His pulse is quite rapid, but that is to be expected. Why is he breathing like that? He may be shocked. Faust, can you hear me? Can you speak? Faust, try to sit up. You stop breathing. Well, do something. He's gone. What? You'll bring me back. Just showing you how badly you need me. And my loyalty costs money. I told you we'd be well paid. You neglected one thing, chum. How much? A thousand dollars. A thousand every time you do a job. Craner, if I'm going to be hit, I want money. Lots of money. Well, what do you expect? I can't pay that. Oh, yes, you can, Major. I'm sure you can. Shall we talk it over in private? Downstairs? Hmm? Over here, Major. I'm waiting. After you, Major. is enough. Hmm? <laughs> You're a real case, Major. You think everyone's supposed to jump when you open your big fat mouth? Well, you've forgotten one thing. Forgotten what? You gotta have me, chum. Now, whatever you're up to, I'm worth plenty to you. Or you wouldn't have gone to all that trouble of breaking me out. You're a dead duck without me. What do you have in mind? Well, walking into that nuclear vault's worth uh, about 25 grand. Let's get a little air in here. 25 grand? You're, you're mad. I don't have that kind of money. Well, then you do the job, Major. That's the figure. 25 grand in small bills. C-O-D, take it or leave it. All right. You'll go tonight. Laurel Drive.
didn't see anyone during all this? Oh, no, sir. I, I heard a clicker noise, like the wheel on the vault was turning, and I, I told him about it, but neither one of us saw anything. That's right. There was nothing when I started to check the other guard post. Then what? Well, I, I turned around, and, uh, and the vault door was open and all, all by itself. And, and I got up to check it, and I, and I pulled my gun, and something was all over me, and then the next thing I know, I'm, I'm waking up. What about the alarm panel? When did it get wrecked? I don't know, Mr. Drake. It was okay when I came on duty. It uh, couldn't have happened while I was checking posts, or he'd have noticed anyone tampering with it. It's set up with each of us covering the other. Yes, but it's quite obvious neither one of you was covering the other. In fact, there was no coverage at all. All right, Doctor. What was it you wanted to tell me about the guinea pig? It was only a matter of time. It died despite of resistance it was developing against radiation. What about Frost? It's too early to tell. But each time it will take longer to reduce him to invisibility, less to return him to normal states. He will also develop a resistance. What about the new material, the X-13? I need more time to study it. Its properties are different from other nuclear materials. I do not like keeping it here. Its bombardment ratio is also much lower. You're uh, afraid of an explosion? Yes. We'll use the X-13 on Faust. It could mean his death. Doctor, I'm not concerned with the welfare of one man. I must know the full potential of your invention. Because my aim is to make an entire army invisible. Do you understand? An entire army. I did not agree to kill a man by deliberate radiation poisoning. You're too old-fashioned to be a genius. Two scientists have brought the world to what it is today, and you can hardly blame me for taking advantage of your discoveries. Fox may already suffer from poisoning, but it's curable. X-13 will put him beyond that point. I will not use it on a human. Huh? Alternative, Doctor, I'd be very happy to discuss it with you. <laughs> oh, that ray is something. Something every cheap, safe cracker in the country's been dreaming of. Too bad the doctor didn't invent it years ago for the right people. He wouldn't be cooped up here now. You better lay off the giggle water. He can't use you drunk, you know. If it's a case of my using him, now come on with a drink. Oh, I could have walked into that vault in broad daylight and done the same thing. It was so easy, I felt like I was taking credit money away from him. Interesting thought, Fast. This time you do it the hard way. In daylight. Well, through with me so soon, huh? Gonna get me killed off. Oh, no, not at all. But I've learned that security has been tripled on the vaults during the night shift. Six men. But it hasn't been strengthened during the day. It's where do you get these gems? He has sources. You better believe him. One more haul and we'll have enough for our present supply and work. Uh-uh. You won't need this and we're ready in the lab.
You can't get away with this in broad daylight, Joey. Why don't you stop running Krenner's errands? Let's not get any more involved. Don't get emotional, baby. You're nice as a playmate. Let's keep it that way. Let's understand that. Mm -hmm. Well, they may not see you, but they're bound to see the lead container when you try to get it out. You got it all wrong, honey. Today's the day we take the bank. You brought daylight? You're crazy. You're talking to a professional, remember? I don't have to worry about time locks or anything like that. Just walk in, pack up the loose cash, and walk out, and you, sweetheart, are going to be waiting for me. Oh, don't even say it. Your cut will be 40%. I'll have to climb out. Thank you very much for your cooperation, miss. I only hope it does some good. I'm sure. Security. Good day, now. They did. How long ago? OK. Guess we can't stop it now. Story's out. The reporter was at the police station when the alarm came in. Well, there's no doubt it was Faust. Everyone at the banks identified him. Well, what can we do? The man makes himself invisible. Locks mean nothing to him. If he did take the X-13, what defense do we have against him? Nothing. None. Something we can do. Yeah, if I can just get down to Yulov. I can't get back to the house till I'm invisible again. Police report the so-called invisible man who robbed the Coatesville National Bank has been identified as Joey Faust, escaped convict and safe cracker. Witnesses said the robber became visible before their eyes. Citizens are warned. Oh, he's got to come back. And that tramp, too. I'll teach them to double-cross me. Take my bags outside and then watch for them. Right. I know some people in Mexico. We can go there and start all over again. I know what I've been, Joey, but I can change all that. What are you doing? Giving you your split. You're on your own, baby. But, but you said we'd be together. Honey, right now I need a car more than I need you. So you can start walking anytime. 
But you just can't go off and leave me. Joey! Goodbye, Laura. I'm sure you'll come along. No. Marie, my dear. <laughs> Doc, what's wrong? Why do I keep appearing and disappearing? I don't know. I needed more time to study the X-13 before trying it out on you. Oh, fine. Well, you're going to do something about it. I've got to be normal, and you're going to take care of it. I will, but not in this place. Well, why not? I got him locked up. I want to be taken away from here, my daughter and I. Only then I will treat you. But... All right, let's blow out of here. Forget something. Where's Faust? He's in the house. Major knows all about you and Faust. Said you'd be back. Inside. Come on down, Faust. Put that thing down. I take my orders from the Major. I have to. The Major? Let me. Julian. You believe what he told you about your son being alive in prison and in Europe? Yes, I do. You're a fool. Your son's dead, Julian. Krenner's been using you all along. She's right. So you had to come back. Come on. Told you to hit the road, it was for your own good. But, Joey, please, please give me a chance. Sweetheart, you had your chance in. Joey! All right, come on. Come on, Judy. Do you know what the Krenner is after? A process. So an invisible army can invade your country. I don't care about Krenner or his army. I care about me. The whole this is futile. Brenner has found me before, he'll find me again. I've got money. I know places across the border he never heard of. Now, how long are these treatments going to take? You may someday be declared a martyr, Mr. Faust. A man who sacrificed himself so that the invisible army might not overrun your country. What are you trying to pull? You want it out of here. I made a deal with you. Now you'll cross me and I'll kill you. I'm a dying man, Mr. Faust. Radiation poisoning. You're dying, too. You're worse off than I. You're lying. You have only weeks, perhaps days, to live. You used me just to get away from Krenner. To free Maria. I had no choice. Come on. Are you so intent upon evading the police for a few remaining days? Don't you care what Krenner is doing to your country? Why should I care? What did my country ever do for me but try and bury me in a concrete tomb for the rest of my life? I'm thinking of my child. You should think of yours. Perhaps you deserve prison. But didn't Maria deserve what has happened to her? Did her mother need to die? Is this the kind of world you want for your child? That is what an invisible army will bring. I have seen it. How much longer I got? A month. No more. Don't wait 
for me. There is a man who has unlocked every door except the one to his own soul. Now he has the key. Come, my dear, we must find a telephone and notify the police. Dragon Smith, security. Sorry, I got my orders. No one enters this area. Too much fallout for safety. All right, officer. Just a minute. with you in a minute, Smitty. Well, Doctor, you and your friends have succeeded in blowing up half the county. There isn't enough left out there to make ashes. I'm deeply sorry, of course. But as I told you before, I didn't do anything by choice. I warned Major Krenner of the danger involved. But you must realize his was a deranged mind. All he could think of was the creating of an invisible army and the power such a force would give him. You know, Doctor, this idea of an invisible army is quite interesting. Imagine what our counterintelligence could accomplish if they were able to become invisible whenever necessary. The Central Intelligence Agency has already discussed the possibilities with me. But my friend, think of the danger if the secret were stolen from us. It has happened before, you know. Perhaps it would be better if we 
Let the secret die with me, Zucrana and Joy Faust. It's a serious problem. What would you do? Here. Now's the time for a bite of cheer. A tasty light where the price is right. Well, look at here, you'll dig this sight. The moment's handy for a piece of candy. Just name your brand, they're also grand. Hey, what do you think of a nice cool drink? Or a big box filled with a popcorn thrill. Let your taste buds meet with an ice cream treat. Refresh yourselves, it's time to eat. So come on, folks, let's join the band as we all head for the refresh. Ten minutes till showtime. Hey! They're ready, folks. For refreshment that is great. If it's early or it's late, it's Orange Crush, Orange Crush, the drink that's extra good. Fresh fruit flavor. That's for me. It tastes better. Naturally. Orange Crush, Orange Crush, get some right away. Visit our refreshment stand right away for delicious Orange Crush and all kinds of good things to eat. I'll drift down to the old sugar bowl and scare up the old gang. Okay? Okay. Hey, gang! Old Ralphie's back! Hello, Hazel? 
What? Hello, Jeanette. Married? Hi, Barbara. Going out with your mother-in-law? Linda? Grandma? Hello, Betty? No. Marge? Husband? What's wrong, anyway? Everybody... Everything seems different. I wonder what my old GI buddies are doing. I wonder if... If I ought to re enlist Don't say it! Don't even think it! You're too smart, Ralphie boy. Got a light? And besides, I'm here to help you. You ain't got no more troubles. Here, hold it. Now, I just happen to have here... Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. sense into that boyish head of yours. Now, uh, first thing you gotta do is... <laughs> Look, Ralphie, ignore this joker. He's in the pay of you-know-who. Here, yeah, give me a drag off that thing. All we want is the facts, man. Facts, eh? I'll fax you, buster. This is what the average civilian in your age bracket earns a month. You may fire when ready, grizzly. Need I say more? That's over a hundred bucks difference. allowances, of course, and automatic raises, and foreign service pay, and promotions. Sure, sure, but uh, uh, look what you gotta do for all that dough. Slosh around in the mud all day. And you can pick your career before you re-enlist. Re-enlist? Are you nuts? We ain't re-enlisting in nothing. We, uh, we don't wanna look like no toy soldier. Look at these civilian clothes. Sharp, eh? Uh, yeah, yeah, like I say. It, but we're gonna... We're gonna work our way through school nights. Study up. Be a big shot. While in service, of course. Don't be taken in, kid. We'll get ourselves a good job. Two weeks vacation every year at good old Lake Morsey Log. In the army, that is. So what? Who wants to live in a barracks all your life? Stick with me, kid. We'll live in luxury. Uh, government insured, of course. Okay, wise guy. Uh, uh, retirement. In the army. Or... Don't listen to him! We'll strike uranium in your backyard! We can invent something! Dehydrated water! Just add water! And with that fat bonus, too. Holy Why, cow! Uh, Come on, hurry up! We'll inherit Fort Knox! We'll strike all! We'll invent the wheel!
protectionist, stop the show. Here's great news you ought to know. We've just got a shipment of taste thrilled treats, all tip top quality and delicious eats. There are hot dogs and popcorn and candy galore. There are soft drinks and coffee and a whole lot more. So direct your steps to our refreshment stand to enjoy the finest snacks in all the land. Everybody loves pizza. How would you like a hot, tempting pizza made fresh to your order right this minute? Well, all you have to do is come to the snack bar. Oh, baby, we got pizza, we got popcorn, we got Pepsi and Coke. We got ice cream, we got candy, and our food no joke. We got hot dogs, we got burgers, we got fried to taste. So come to the snack bar, come to the snack bar, come and see your place. So during intermission, follow with the vision, come to the snack bar. <laughs> Give them a faith to live by. Worship this week. It's coming after me. Mitch. That is extraterrestrial. Comes from outer space. From some godforsaken antimatter galaxy millions and millions of light years from the earth atomic hydrogen weapons capable of wiping cities countries off the face of the earth are completely ineffective against this creature from the skies <laughs> Attacking the United Nations building. 
Chasing us, how are you doing? For God's sake, hurry, man. It's catching up with us fast. step away from his past into a future free from fear? Or must a dead past return, making of every living moment a time tortured, tormented? <laughs> tormented, holding you spellbound for the she-ghost of Haunted Island. of desire overshadowed by nightmares. Can a dead love's lust destroy a man? Or can a man defy the she-ghost of Haunted Island? It's going to be just as though you never existed. I'm going to marry Meg. But at the wedding rehearsal was one uninvited guest. I'll never let you marry Meg. You belong to me, Tom. You belong to a ghost. Tom Stewart killed me! Tom Stewart killed me! Hope you're enjoying your visit here this evening. Now, on with the show. They say it's the dead growing restless and calling to the living. I never believed it until that evening Vi came looking for me. But you always knew that marriage was out. I never lied to you. But I always thought that... Look, Vi, whatever you thought is your business. But it's all over. It's finished. 
You should never have come here, and you'll be doing yourself a favor if you take the first boat back. I can't go back without you. Please come back with me, Tom. Just tell her you changed your mind. Nobody even knows I'm on the island. I chartered a private boat over. I won't even go back to the club. I'll quit right now. All right, will you, for heaven's sakes, realize when a good thing is over? A second-rate singer like me doesn't fit in the picture anymore. I hear she's quite young and has money, too. I please understand. I'm in love with her. I need you, Tom. No one will ever love you more than I do. I'm sorry, I... I'm sorry for everything. Good night, I... I still have your letters. Show me the light, darling. What about the letters, Vi? Oh, I never throw anything like that away. You never know when they might come in handy. I wonder how she'd feel if I read them to her. Putting in pertinent footnotes, of course. Or maybe I ought to show them to a lawyer. I'm sure he'd know what to do with them. How would a lawsuit fit in with your music career, Tom? How would the piano genius of jazz feel about that kind of publicity? Darling, you look as if you were ready to kill me. Now, you get this straight. I'm marrying Meg. And you get this straight, Tom Stewart. No one will ever have you but me. <laughs> Sandy, look, do me a favor, will you, and run out and play somewhere. I'm busy. I... Don't you like me anymore? Sure, I like you. I love you. I just want to be by myself. Where were you last night? 
Auntie Emerson said a beach barbecue, and everyone on the island was there. Meg was looking all over for you. Sandy, please run along. Okay. Sorry to disturb you. I almost forgot. The wedding announcements came, and Mommy wants you to look at one before we send them out. There's only a week till the big day. Yeah, okay, okay. seaweed. I know what's the matter with me. I'm seeing things. I'm letting my imagination run wild. Is it my conscience? No. Why should it bother me? I didn't do anything to buy. I didn't kill her. It's her own fault she's dead. She came out here of her own accord. She leaned against the railing. She fell. It wasn't my fault if it gave way. Why should I be blamed? I had nothing to do with it. Anyway, nobody ever needs to know. Nobody will even connect me with her. Why should they? Except for this watch of hers. All right, bye. That's the end of you. someone else? Oh, no, no. It's just that I wasn't expecting anyone. Uh, what are you doing up here? I'm looking for you. What are you doing up here in this old lighthouse? Well, I... At least it's quiet. I, uh... I, I wanted to think. I guess I'm worried about that Carnegie Hall thing next month. I wonder if I'm good enough. Of course you're good enough. You're the best jazz pianist in the world. It's not perfume. It is perfume, our page. It's so really cold and gloomy in here. It gives me the creeps having that big lamp staring at us. I haven't liked it up here since the light stopped working. Glad they're going to tear it down. Come on, let's go outside to the sun's warm, huh?
they're sending the gown tomorrow. Oh, you're gonna love it, Tom. Ooh, I was supposed to see about a tie for Dad, and I forgot. I'll be so glad when this whole thing's over with, won't you? It'll only be a week more. We can't wait that long, can't we? to go to the mainland and be married this afternoon. About the wedding? Well, I was never for a big deal anyway. I only agreed to it because you wanted it. Isn't it that I still want it? Please, Meg, please, do this for me. Just go away with me right now. I told you that's impossible. Not my mother and father to think of as well as you. Then I'll have to go by myself. What about the wedding? What about it, Meg? If you go, there won't be one, that's all. Meg. And now we will perform the greatest of all magic accomplishments ever performed on this island the secret cabinet. As you will please notice, the cabinet is empty. Tom, Tom, you're not paying any attention. Don't you want to see the secret cabinet? Oh, sure I do. I, I wouldn't miss it. Go ahead. As I close the doors to the magic cabinet and say the magic words and tap it with my magic wand, abracadabra, we no longer have an empty cabinet. It is now filled with jelly beans. Tom Stewart. Fine one you are. Oh, Sandy. Sandy, if you hate me for the rest of your life, I deserve it. I couldn't hate you no matter what you did. No matter what I did? No matter what. Even like fighting with your sister? Meg's mad at me, you know. She'll get over it. Besides, if she doesn't, you'll be free to marry me. Okay. From now on, you're the other woman in my life. <laughs> okay, honey. You run along now. I got some practicing to do. I'll clean up your magic stuff. Bye. Bye, Tom.
Who's there? It's Mrs. Ellis, Tom. I brought you some flowers. Is something the matter, Tom? What makes you say that? You sound upset. Perhaps I'd better check you another time. Oh, no. No, Mrs. Ellis. No, come in and sit down. Thank you for the flowers. They're lovely. Sit down right here. Mrs. Ellis, I want to ask you something. <laughs> it sounds kind of silly, but... Well, do you believe that the spirits of the dead can come back to haunt the living? Do you believe in ghosts? What makes you ask a thing like that? You haven't answered, Mrs. Ellis. Nobody believes in ghosts nowadays. Who do you? If anybody was to ask me seriously, I would have to say no. Of course, a real estate agent runs into many strange things in an empty house sometimes. What kind of things? Well, there was a family named Samuels. They lived in that last house down the beach. One day, their little boy took his dog and went fishing. They never came back, and nobody knows what happened to them. After the Samuels moved away, I signed three tenants during that first month, but not one of them would stay more than a few days. Yeah, yeah, I know that story, but that doesn't prove anything. They complained about an unseen dog whining and scratching at the door, but that wasn't what made them break their lease. It was the cold up in the boy's room. You could feel it in your bones, a deathly cold. The walls were always damp and stained with seawater. Whatever caused it, the thing came back every night. Did you ever see it, Mrs. Ellis? It's been many years since I've seen anything. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I keep forgetting. Did, did anybody see it? People say they found wet seaweed on the boy's bed. Well, but you can't call wet seaweed a ghost, can you? Tom, what's wrong? Why do you ask that? You're running away from something. Well, Tom? Well, something I... I can't believe exists myself. If it does exist, you can't solve anything by running. Then, on the other hand, if it doesn't exist, there's nothing to run from. You're a very wise woman, Mrs. Ellis. Thanks for talking with me. Oh, and thanks for the flowers. They're beautiful. Come back soon.
can't hear me, can you? Because you don't even exist. You're a shadow, perhaps. Light, perhaps. Nothing more. But, Cly, just in case you can hear me, I've come to tell you this. I'm not going to pay any attention to you anymore. I'm going to live my life right here. I'm going to stop running. And I'm going to marry Meg, Cly. I'm going to marry Meg. That's all I came to say. It's going to be just as though you never existed. I'm going to marry Meg. Just in case you can hear me by. Good night. And goodbye. Open the refrigerator. Help yourself. Okay. Mrs. Elf said you wanted to see me. What about? I, uh, sit down. I wondered if you'd, uh, Talk to your sister Meg for me. Tell her how sorry I am. Okay. You tell her I behaved like a little boy and I'm ashamed of myself. I'll tell her. She didn't call anything off. She didn't? Uh-uh. Guess she's ready to make up. Just like grown-ups. <laughs> Are you all ready? Yeah, I'm all ready. Have you got the ring and everything? just a little bit young. I know. Dear little Sandy, she's just a child. Why, do you know how old I am? I'm practically nine. Why, in China and in Borneo and India and places like that, girls already have husbands at my age. Mm. I'd get married tomorrow if I could find someone like you. <laughs> Can't I please try the ring? I just put it on your finger. Put what on my finger? The ring. I don't have the ring. Sandy. Sandy, tell me the truth. Didn't you see anything right there? There wasn't anything to see. You heard. I'm sorry. Well, I'll, I'll find a ring later. You run along now, Sandy. I, I gotta finish my practicing. Goodbye, Sandy. I'll see you later. All right, bye. I know now you've come back. But it won't do you any good, because I'm going to marry Meg. Now, 
What you do with the ring, Vi? Vi, what did you do with that ring? What you're going to... All right. No more questions. You know what's wrong with you? What? You've been working too hard, getting ready for your concert. You've had a lonely life here on the island, away from all your musician friends. It's been getting you down. But I'll take care of all that once we're married. Maybe you better tell your mother that the wedding's on again. I never told her it was off. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? You know, the first thing you're going to do is have a long vacation. A whole month honeymoon in Europe. Uh-uh. You know how many hit records I'd have to sell to pay for that? Dad's footing the bill. It's his wedding present to us. He wanted to tell you himself, but he won't be here to write before the wedding. And when we get back, I'm going to have a big party so I can get to know all your friends. Big party? We'll be living in a three-room apartment. Mother and Daddy won't mind if we use their house in Bel Air. They say now that I'm getting married, it's too big for them anyway, so they'll be turning it over to us for good one of these days. Are you trying to spoil me? There's nothing I'd like better. Come on up to the house a minute. I want you to see something. What? My wedding gown. Isn't that supposed to be bad luck? You're not superstitious about things like that, are you? No. I'm not superstitious. My garden's full of roses this month, and it seemed about time to bring you some fresh ones, so... Hi. Hello. Well, hello, stranger. Hi, Kitty. Where have you been keeping yourself, lady? Uh, some beautiful gifts have arrived, and you haven't seen any of them. Hey, look at this. But you're a dear anyway. Champagne. Fix your drink. Mmm. <laughs> look, another one. Uh-oh, there's my girl. Hi, pal. Hi. Is everything made up with you and Nick? Well, I'm working on it. Hi, Miss Ellis. Tom. Another pair. People must think newlyweds live on lettuce by candlelight. This makes nine pairs of candlesticks and 12 salad bowls and more coming every time the mailboat arrives. Meg got her wedding gown today and Tom, it's simply a dream. What a bride goes through to make herself attractive for you men. It took three fittings to get the bodice right, and three layers of net to make the skirt full enough. Well, hardly seems worth it. After all, I'm only marrying her, so you'll be my mother-in-law. Sandy, see if there's a window open. There's a cold draft all of a sudden. Sweet smell. Mm, must be the fresh roses. My roses never smelled like that. It's a woman's perfume. Help me make room for these, dear. In my day, it wasn't candlesticks, it was teaspoons. Mr. Hubbard and I received no less than 78 of them when we were married. Maybe that's a reason for his attitude. When he went back to the main room, he said he was going to go right to the office and stay there until the wedding. I'm sure you'll never treat your wife like that, will you, Tom? Oh, will you? He isn't here, Mother. Where is he? I think Meg took him to look at her dress. My wedding dress! What is it? What did she find? Seaweed. Yes, Mrs. Ellis. I'm in here. I brought you some honey. Don't get up. I'll just put it on the bar here. 
Thank you, Mrs. Ellis. I really brought the honey only as an excuse, because I knew you were upset. Tom, there's nothing supernatural about what happened to Meg's dress. There must be a logical explanation. I know, I know. But that seaweed, it's just like that Samuels boy. There have been no recent deaths, Tom. No. Anyway, I'm sure of one thing. I've had enough of her. Who are you talking about? Oh, a, a friend I used to have, a girl named Vi. She came over here to the island to see me. We, well, we quarreled up in the lighthouse. And, well, at any rate, she went back to the mainland. Are you sure that's what happened? What do you mean, am I sure? Well, maybe she didn't go back to the mainland. Maybe this girl Vi is still here and is playing tricks to get even. Now, where do you suppose a woman could hide on this island? Who's hiding? Never mind, Sandy. Things will work out. You'll see. People always saying, never mind. Because there are some things that grown-ups don't want children to know about, Sandy. Those are always the most interesting things. Who is Tom looking for? Never mind. Betty's looking for at the lighthouse. He's always hanging around there. The lighthouse is a very dangerous place, Sandy. It'll soon be torn down. That doesn't keep people from going there. But you mustn't go there, Sandy. Not ever. Run along home now. Come on, Fritz. What's the matter, Fritz? I'm surprised at you. You're being as silly as Tom. Go alone. Young lady. Young lady. Bye. That's a lovely perfume you're wearing. It's no use. I know you're in here somewhere. I can hear you, too. Don't you think it's ridiculous to hide? Come down. There's something I want to say to you. Very well. If you won't, then I'll go up and find you. Listen to me, please. I don't usually give people advice, but Tom is a dear friend, and I want to ask you to leave him alone. Are you listening to me? You might at least have the politeness to answer. My, that's a nasty laugh you have. What tricks are you up to now? Wait. Listen to me. You know you're worrying and frightening Tom half to death. It's not hard to sense how desperate he's getting. I know Meg doesn't concern you, but you wouldn't want to make an innocent person suffer, would you? I wish you'd speak more clearly. You're trying to make me sorry for you, I suppose. But I can't help thinking how foolish you are playing this absurd game. Stand still and let me talk to you, please. Cause those two people all the unhappiness you need to. It's time you stopped. You don't belong here, you know. Why don't you leave Tom and Meg alone and go back? 
What are you saying? I can't hear you. <gasps> what a fiend you are. You're not fooling me. I know exactly what you are. It's not fair. You're getting the party, the presents, the husband. I get nothing. Be nice to me, Peanut. In two more days, I'll be a married woman, and you'll miss me. I'll miss Tom more. Sandy! How's my family? Daddy! Am I too early or too late? I'm so happy you made it in time. You don't think I'd let my daughter marry without her favorite father being around now, do you? <laughs> well, roll up your sleeves and pitch in. The party's right after tomorrow's rehearsal. Hi, honey. Frank. Where's the groom? He's not feeling well. What's the matter with him? He's been overworking. At the piano, I suppose. Please don't start that again. It's bad enough to accept a musician into this family, but a jazz musician is asking too damn much. Why don't you go to bed, dear? You must be tired. What's the matter with a jazz musician? Be still, brat. Poor Tom. Kid. Can't you hear us something? I asked if you live here. In the lighthouse? No, on the island. On the island. Why do you want to know? Look, kid, I really don't care. I'm looking for a guy called Tom Stewart. Do you know him? What do you want him for? He won 200 thou on a sweepstakes ticket, and I'm here to give him the money. I don't believe you. Look, kid, do you know where he lives? What you looking for, Dad? Not much to see out there, huh? Oh, wow, this is a crazy pad. Aren't you lost, buddy? Oh, man, this sure is. Hey, now, wait a minute. What is this? Look, I don't want nothing from you, Dad. I really don't. She owes me a fin, that's all, and I thought it'd be nice to have. What are you talking about? No sweat, Dad. I don't want nothing from you. She owes me a fin, that's all. Wow, you sure have a nice pad, Dad. Now, look, I don't mean to be rude, but you'll either have to tell me what you're talking about or get out of here. Look, the blonde, the one with the... <laughs> she owes me some bread, that's all. There's nothing to get bugged about. What she does here is your business. I can see you dig me, Dad. Look, I motor this chick, Vi Mason, over to the island. I got a boat. Now, when she asked me if I take her, well, I say okay, but she said she doesn't have the change. This is what she said. Okay, so we make a deal. Five bucks over and five bucks back. 
Now look, I haven't the faintest idea who or what you're talking about. Look, Dad, all I want is the bread. When she didn't show by morning, I figure I'd been had. And I know she didn't go back on the regular run because I asked the putt-putt jockey and he said no. Now, I'm a real square, Dad. I didn't remember the name of the guy she said. Today I remember. How do you like that? Tom Stewart. That's the name of the guy she said when we made the run. So, enough of this jazz, Dad. Come on. I have to leave. Get out. Well, maybe I better wait around until the chick shows. You'll do nothing of the... All right. Maybe it's worth it five dollars just to get rid of you. Here. There you go. What you do is your business, Dad. All I want is what's coming to me. There you are. Plenty of pickle? Yes, sir, plenty of pickle. How are you, Mrs. Ellis? Warm, Mr. Nelson. It's a very warm day. I think I'll have something light. Uh, egg salad sandwich and a glass of iced tea with lemon. Don't like sugar in my tea, but plenty of lemon. Well, how about a nice hamburger or a tuna fish salad? What's the matter with your eggs? Oh, well, there's nothing the matter with them. I just don't have any. I've been out of eggs for almost a week now. Kramer's hens just stopped laying. It's a funny thing. Nothing like this ever happened before, except once about the time the Samuels boy died. They just up and quit laying. Would you like a tuna fish salad? Just the iced tea. Right. Hey, Dad, can I have a Coke? Right. The Hubbards had to send over to the mainland special to get some eggs for their party. Can't bake a cake without eggs. Speaking of the wedding, are you still there, Sandy? Yes, ma'am. Shouldn't you be at the rehearsal? Holy cow! Charge it, Mr. Nelson! You know, Mr. Nelson, I wish I could have my sight back long enough to see Tom and Meg married. They must be a lovely couple. I'd give anything to see them. They're a handsome couple, all right. Tom Stewart's marrying a beautiful gal. The nicest of families, too. Say, Dad. What did you say the handle of the guy getting spliced was? Tom Stewart. The girl's name is Meg Hubbard. And little Sandy will be standing here to my right, next to the bride, and then the groom, of course, to her right, and you'll be standing here. The parents will be in their pews, and... May I help you? Yeah, I want to speak to Tom Stewart. Excuse me. You're interrupting a wedding rehearsal in there. Like I said, Dad, what you do is your business. I mean, it's crazy with me if you want to marry one chick and keep another one on the side for kicks. Wow. But I feel sort of a responsibility, seeing as how I brought your broad over on my tug. See what I mean? What are you driving at? Come on, Dad, don't you know? I gave you the money you're after. What more do you want? Well, it seems that our deal is in line for some renegotiation. Tom, what? hurry. We're waiting for you. Yeah, go ahead back. We'll pick it up later. Time, I got plenty of. Now...
Mrs. Stewart. Isn't that right, Mr. Stewart? I'll be right back. Please, Tom. Just one more. Oh, I, uh... I wanted to get a drink. Yeah, I'll get it for you. Just one more number. I want to show you all. I started you, Tom, but candidates are the best kind. I had my mouth open and my eyes closed. This is going to be the worst picture ever made. If you don't like it, I can take another. Oh, no. No, this is fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, let me look. No. Get a drink. Why are you so upset? I'm not upset. Well, something's bothering you. Is it another girl? You can tell me. I, I'll try not to be jealous. Jealous? Who could be jealous of Vi? She's dead. She doesn't exist. She's a, a perfume. She's a footprint. She's a hand. She's a, a face in a picture. Who could be jealous of Vi? You're talking crazy, Tom. Let me see the picture. No. You're not making any sense. It's her face between the two of us. I don't see anything. Except you and me. wonder the way Tom's been acting lately. Anything Tom does is all right. He's perfect in your eyes anyhow, isn't he? Oh, don't worry, Sandy. I love him. I suppose every girl has a few last-minute doubts. Because he's always around the lighthouse? Because he imagines things that aren't so. Everything will be all right. It's late. There's a light up there. I wonder who it could be. A boy and a girl, probably. You wouldn't understand. I would, too. They used to go there to nip. Not anymore. Everybody says it's too cold and damp and smelly. Does Tom go there with anybody? Or does anybody meet him there? Now who's imagining things? You're right. That's probably only a reflection of the moonlight on a loose pane of glass. Over 
大会。I didn't kill you, Vi. I never killed anybody, and I never will. And once I'm married, I'm going to live a very happy, very normal life with Meg and with our friends. And there's really nothing you can do about it. Isn't there? You may have noticed I found my voice now. I pick things up fast. I'm going to use it to tell the world about you. I told you, Tom. No one will ever have you but me. Stop it, Vi. Try and make me. Tom Stewart killed me! 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 such a hurry, Dad. You're always in a hurry. You shouldn't be like that. Give me that. I just want to talk to you, Chum. A nice, friendly talk. That's all. Give me that. You look sick, Dad. Something's wrong. Look, are you going to talk to me or not? Let's get this thing over with. Just what is it you want? Like I said, Dad, all I wanted was coming to me. You know, the way it looks to me, we should be sort of partners. I help you, and you help me. I bring your playgirl over to the island, and I figure it for some sort of service to you to sort of buy something from me. Like a silent service, catch? The word you're reaching for is blackmail. That's not it at all, Dad. We should be sort of pals. I've done you a favor, now you can do me one. In other words, if I don't pay you blackmail, you go to my fiancé and expose my life of sin. Is that it? Well, you're saying it rather crude, Dad, but you're getting the idea. But it won't do you any good. I'm not going to pay you one lousy cent. In the first place, I don't know a girl named Vi. And even if I did, it wouldn't do you any good. Because, unfortunately, I'm not sharing my cottage with anyone. If it'd make you feel better, you can look for yourself. That's not necessary, Dad, not at all. You see, I already have. Well, then you know she's not here. Well, yes and no. You see, when you were so eager to come up with that five spot, I figured you were, well, anxious to keep everything sort of quiet-like. Now, when I find out you're getting spliced to another chick, well, the story's even getting better to read. Now, here comes the part I like the best. I do a little snooping when you're not around. What do you think? I think... You still with me, Dad? Go on. You see, that's the punchline. That's the gimmick. If this doll Vi isn't hiding in your cottage, and she isn't any place else on the island, and she never left the island... Now, what do you suppose could have happened to her, huh? You tell me. <laughs> You're a comedian. Uh-uh. You're the one that has the rest of the answers. You know something? Everything you've just said is all bluff. You don't know a damn thing. That's not friendly, Dad. Not friendly at all. In fact, I thought you'd take a wrong outlook on things, so I sort of borrowed something from a friend of yours. Get out of here. I can see that you finally dig me, Dad.
we come up here for? So that you and I can have a little talk in peace and quiet. It's cold. Just what do you want? Five thou. Five thou? And don't tell me you no gut. Your future father-in-law is loaded. <gasps> Who are you talking to? You didn't hear anything? <laughs> I didn't hear anything. I'm waiting to hear something from you. They're closing in on me, Tom. You'd better take care of him right now. No. Is that your final answer? Oh, I, I didn't. Tell me a minute. He's so easy, Tom. Just as easy as I was. Go ahead. There's a piece of pipe behind you. One good blow is all it takes. You got rid of me, but you'll never get rid of him as long as he lives. He'll bleed you of every penny, Tom. And all the time you'll have it hanging over you. What if people find out? What if Meg finds out? You can't let him do it, Tom. You'll lose everything. Look, you've had enough time. Do I get the money or don't I? Yes, Tom. Does he get paid? No. All right. You know what's best. See what your chick has to say about this. Get him, Tom. Wait. You change your mind? Get him, Tom. No. Come here. Sandy, did you hear your mother call you? What is it? Drop whatever you're doing and come here at once. All right. Oh, Sandy, we have to be at the church in 20 minutes, and you're not even dressed yet. Never mind that now. Meg snagged her him. Come and hold it while I take it up. You'll make a lovely wife, Meg. Oh, thanks. Meg, do you really love him a whole lot? Whatever makes you ask a thing like that? Last night you said you weren't sure. Well, I'm sure now. Oh, you'll remember to take the bouquet when I hand it to you, won't you? I'll remember. S suppose he'd done something awful bad. The way I feel now, I'd marry him no matter what. Oh, don't forget, you stand close behind me, but not too close. There, that's done. Mm -hmm. And you, young lady, get into your gown this instant. Hubbard loaned us her ring in place of the one you lost, so that's okay. I've got the minister's fee here in my pocket, and everything's under control. So snap out of it. Okay, okay, I'll be all right. Then get that funereal look off your face. This is a wedding man. Cheer him up, honey. Well, that's... that's 
you a pretty dress, Sandy. You're really gonna marry my sister, aren't you? Oh, I don't feel like that. I can't help it. Suppose you love somebody. Somebody who did something bad. And only you knew. Would you keep it secret? Well, good friends generally try to stand by one another. But what if it were something real, real bad? Real, real bad like what? Murder. gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God, signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church, which holy estate Christ adorned and beautified with his presence and first miracle that he wrought in Cana of Galilee, and is commended to St. Paul to be honorable among all men, and therefore is not by any to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, soberly, and in the fear of God. Into this holy estate, these two persons present come now to be joined. If any man can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Bye. I've got to tell you, you've won. I'm sure you're glad to hear that. I'm going away, Vi, and I'm not coming back. Vi? Vi, I'm running out on Meg. I'm not coming back. I knew something would happen. I was against the marriage from the beginning. Let me help you with your gown, dear. Don't bother, Mother Sandy will help you. Sandy, help your sister. Where is Sandy? I thought she came home ahead of us. Well, if she did, she's not here now. I wish you hadn't seen it, Sandy. Now I'm afraid you'll tell everybody and 
I don't know what to do. I won't tell. But how can I be sure of that? Good friends protect each other. Yes. But sometimes they can't help themselves. Things leak out. Police hear about it. Do you know what would happen if the police heard about this? I'd go to the gas chamber. Why did you have to see it? I couldn't tell them. No. Nobody could help any of it except me. I could have saved Vi. I could have put my hand out to her. Instead, I killed her. Sandy. Sandy, you know I love you very much, don't you? Thank you, Reverend. She isn't there. I can't imagine where she could have gone. Where's Tom? The least he could do is be here when Meg needs him. Can't you leave him alone? There's a light in the lighthouse. Sandy could be there. She talks about the place all the time. Oh, I don't think she'd go there at night, though. We'd better make sure. There. Let's go up and look at the sea. You're not afraid of me, are you? I never used to be. Come on, then. When the moon shines, you can see the whole island from up here. I didn't tell them anything. Good. Good. Let's go back. You afraid? Yes. Oh, Sandy. Sandy, why did you have to see it? And sing it nice and loud. Thank you. Um, um, poor little Matt will go to the dome. Up in the day, the two guys went to fight the sun. The way to
as you leave the theater, folks, please be careful. Don't let this happen to your car. Be sure to remove the speaker before you leave. If you should accidentally pull a speaker loose, please turn it in at our snack bar or box office. Thank you.